Thank you for amplifying Jesus with us and welcome to this station. I'm Chris Honigan, your host. You know, last week we, we said, we said so many times, you better get your praise on. Tonight, we're going deeper into that. Here, we're going to go, you know what? It's so exciting right now. Why, why don't we do this? Why don't we go inside the world infamous Resonate Church in Jonesboro, Arkansas? And bottom line, uh, here's our chapel pastor, McKenna Boone, standing by. And tonight, we learn that your praise is a weapon. Did you hear me what I said? Little Vicky Wines for you. Did you hear me what I said? I said your praise is a weapon. McKenna, oh, it's on now. Let's go. Let's go resonate. And I mean for a minute, because I believe God's going to do something great here tonight. Not that me, Pastor Pam, Pastor Christian, none of us are going to do anything great. But I believe God is going to do something great tonight. If you could go ahead and make that up in your mind, um, some deliverances are going to take place here tonight. I believe some healings could take place here tonight. But you see, it, it ain't just about me. I've had my mind up made all day that I'm coming to church, and I believe God's going to do something great. Um, but it, it's up to you. If you come expecting something from God 100% of the time, he's going to come and he's going to give you what you expect. He's that kind of God. He's not going to let you down. He's not just going to show up and just sit there. If you ex come expecting a something from God, he plans to show up and he plans to fulfill every single one of your desires. That's the kind of God that I serve. So if you come in tonight and you are expecting something from him, I guarantee you, you can get it. If you truly make your mind up and you want it, he is here in this place tonight because I already feel him and I already believe that he's going to do something. So I'm going to get this out the way and then we're going to let God move the way he wants to move. How about that? The title, and, and listen, the title of my sermon tonight is Your Praise is a Weapon. So how crazy that we would stand up here and God tells me that we got to learn how to praise. And, and you're thinking, well, it's just because you're about to preach. No, 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 because me and God fought over this sermon and another sermon and everything else. And he said we got to learn how to praise. And it's funny because it's something that I've been struggling with because when you're in the deepest of darkest of times in your life, you don't want to praise. And you know why? Because we are human beings and that is normal. I'm not saying it's right. I'm saying it's normal. We're humans. That's how we are. We, we were created to fight the flesh. The flesh don't want to worship. The flesh don't want to praise. Especially when you don't feel like you can go on and move and do nothing. You don't want to praise. Plain and simple. But I'm here to tell you tonight that once you make your mind up once again that, hey, I'm coming and I'm going to praise whether, whether, whether I know how it's going to turn out or not. I I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to praise God because I'm expecting a victory to take place. I've heard a lot of people say, I've, you know, I'm only 22 years old, but y'all have to understand I've been in church my whole entire life. I can count on the number of hands, probably the services I've missed, and it's been in the last year due to COVID. Let's just be real about it. Uh, I've been in church my whole life. So when I say over the years, I've heard people say, I mean, since I came out the womb, I've been in church, and I hear people all the time say, when I'm struggling, I just can't find a reason to praise. You might have even said that just, I've been there. I've been there. I don't preach stuff that I ain't been through. You know what I'm saying? I don't preach stuff that I ain't been through. So it, it don't feel bad if I call you out for something because I'm probably calling myself out too. 
But, but li li listen, I've heard people say there's just no way. I, I, don't, I don't know what to do because I, I don't feel like I have anything to praise about. Because it's hard. Because you don't see the end. You don't understand what in the world's going on. So how could you possibly praise? It's hard. But after all these years, after these 22 years of birth, of birth, of life, I have come to know I stand before you tonight and I will tell you that your praise is a weapon. My praise is a weapon. The enemy cannot stand against my praise. When I make my mind up that I have something to praise God for, he cannot touch it. Praise will silence the enemy. Praise God. He needs to learn how to shut up, don't you know? It will silence the enemy. It will give us strength. It will lighten our load. And it will deliver us every single time from our enemies. Every time. I don't care who your enemy is. If you praise God for it, he's going to take care of it. And if it does all that stuff, it's not just any old weapon that you can keep in your back pocket. This is an effective weapon that you've got to pull out and you've got to use every single day. If you know the devil's going to come against you, and let me tell you, he will every single day. You know he's coming. Why are you going to keep it in your back pocket? You know somebody's coming up to attack you in the physical. Let's be real. We all know each other around here. We all know each other. Around. You ain't just going to let the enemy, somebody you don't know, come up and just beat you up. If you've got a weapon in your back pocket, let's be real about it. So why do we let the devil? We let him come up to us. We let him tear us up. We let him run all over us. And then we just let him go on like, oh, okay, now I'm a little sad. Now I'm a little beat up. And now I don't know what to do. Why don't you take out your weapon and learn to praise God before it even happens? Every single time. It has a 100% guarantee money back. You know what I'm saying? It's going to work. It's not like, I asked Matthew and Tyler if this was the right analogy before. It's not like showing up to a gunfight with a knife. You know what I'm saying? Because you're going to be in some trouble. Tyler said, unless you're really good with a knife and they're really bad with a gun, you've got no chance. You know what I'm saying? It's not like that. When you show up with your praise, you're not backed up into the corner. You're not, you're not out. You're, uh, uh, people are looking at you like, oh, she's got something. I, I, I'm a little scared. I need to back up. I need to get out of the way. It's a, whip, a weapon that's going to get you a victory every single time. But it's hard to use. It's hard to pull it out of your tool belt and think, hey, I know this is going to work because sometimes it comes with trouble. Sometimes it hurts. Sometimes it hurts a lot. Sometimes you don't understand what's going on, but you have to push through and praise any way. Here's something else that's cool about praise. It is a spiritual, offensive, and defensive weapon. Now that's pretty cool. In other words, it don't just work one way. You know what I'm saying? If somebody's coming against you, you can pull out that praise, and it's going to work in your favor in, on, on your offense, in other words. Or for defense, you can go ahead and throw that praise up so nobody can come against you. That's the cool thing about praise is it works both sides. That's just like my God, ain't it, to work in every single area, every single way. It ain't one-sided. It's not just going to get you out of some situation. It's going to cover you from other situations that you can't even see coming. It works both ways. Praising in the middle of a battle is hard. Because, once again, we are fleshly beings, and sometimes that's just annoying. <laughs> when you're really sold out for God, you're just like, wow, really, can I not just, like, kill this old flesh once and for all it's hard because it doesn't make sense because you're sitting in there well why would i praise when life is awful anybody ever been there why would i praise when nothing's going right why would i praise when i lose my job why would i praise when i'm going through this why would i praise when i'm going through that you got to learn 
that every single time you take that weapon out, the battle begins to disappear. Things begin to get a little easier. Life begins to get a little better. Things begin to go a little bit more your way because you're finally learning to put your trust in God. Psalms 18 and 3 tells us, I'm pretty sure Pastor Pam used that this morning because she was all over my sermon in every way, but I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. That should be enough for you right there. Just be, I'm just going to call upon just because he's worthy to be praised. No other reason other than the fact that he's worthy. But you know, my God always goes above and beyond. And it says, so shall I be saved from mine enemies. 100% of the time. It doesn't say sometimes if you decide to call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, he might save you from your enemies. No, no, no. If you call, he's going to save you every time. Guaranteed, 100% money back. That's the kind of guarantees I like because what do you have to lose? That's how it is with praise. What do you have to lose? Nothing. So you might as well take your praise out and try it because what's it going to do, make things worse? No, it ain't. Let me do a spoiler alert. Praise ain't never going to make nothing worse, Okay. So if I call upon the Lord, if I go ahead and I'm going to give him praise, he's going to fight my battles for me every time. He's going to take care of those enemies. He's going to take care of those people who come against me. He's going to fight my battles for me, and that should be enough, right? When we praise, it doesn't make sense to us sometimes. But it's not about us. We have to be able to have that faith, like we talked about Wednesday night, all over everything, in the power of God. Because praise, catch me here, is a weapon of faith. Your battles, everything you're going through, it's a fight of faith. We praise in spite of the circumstances surrounding us. Right, Hebrews 11 and 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So we're in, when we're in the middle of a battle, we hope, keep that up there, we hope for a victory in our battle. So we have to praise and have faith for the victory over our battle, even though we cannot see it yet. In other words, every single battle that we face, is a test of your faith. So if you don't have faith, you're in trouble. <laughs> you're in trouble. You're not going to win if you don't learn to have faith and you don't learn to just surrender over to God and say, okay, here, God, I'm just going to praise you because I'm having faith that you're just going to fight my battles, that I'm going to come out with a victory. I don't know about y'all, but I like to win. And every single thing I do, I don't care. Ah, I don't care. Matthew and them were making fun of me the other night because we were playing this stupid game we made up where we don't let the ball touch the ground. He's over like, McKenna's taking it so serious. She's making all these weird noises. Oh, because I like, I'm not very good at it, but I'm going to try. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't want to lose. I don't want to be bad at nothing. I always want to win at everything I do. That's just who I am, right? It's the same way spiritually because why in the world would I want the devil to win a lick of anything against me? You know what I'm saying? When he come against me, I want to put a knot on his head because he is worthless. You know what I'm saying? And in order to do that, I have to have faith that my God is going to show up and help me fight this battle because I ain't going to do nothing without him. It's a fight of faith. Probably the most well-known example of our praise being a weapon. You can take that off now. Praise being a weapon is the story of King Jehoshaphat of Judah, all right? And I'm telling you what, I like this old story. And I, I didn't want to preach on it for the longest time because Pastor would always get up here and he would always talk about it. And I was like, well, no one wants to hear it again. Well, he ain't said it in a while, so I'm going to preach on it tonight, all right? Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 1. And if, if you want to read the whole entire story, it's all of chapter 20. Second Chronicles chapter 20. I'm not going to read all, you know, 40 verses or whatever. So what we're going to do is we're going to skip around. All right. So you can get the key information. All right. Verse one says, 
It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them other beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. In other words, Jehoshaphat's about to go to battle with all these different people. All right, that's what we need to know from there. We're about to go to battle. We got three different people who's coming against us. All right, verse 2 says, Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side Syria. And behold, they be in that place right there, which is that other place, like Comrade said, that other place. So they're coming up to their king and they say, okay, there's a multitude coming. You better get ready. We're about to go to battle. And verse 3 said, and Jehoshaphat feared. He ain't even seen nothing yet. Oh, he just heard from a bunch of people. Now, don't that sound like us? We just hear from a bunch of different people who don't know a lick of nothing, and we start to fear. Ah, we do. We do. We ain't even thought to ask God about it ourselves. We ain't even thought to just, you know, think for even a second. We just hear what other people have to say, and we fear. He don't, even know, he don't even know the details yet, you know what I'm saying? He just told them they were coming, and Jehoshaphat feared. But this is good now. And he set himself to seek the Lord. All right, that's step number one. When you start to fear because you're listening to everybody else, set yourself up to seek the Lord. Not everybody. He could have just sat there and talked back and forth with them for 55 minutes. That's what some of us do. We go back and forth with each other. Or we'll call, oh, Pastor Pam, listen, this is what's going on. Oh, Pastor Christian, listen, I, I need you to get a hold of God. Why don't you get a hold of God yourself? They can get a hold of him, and guess what? So can you. He set himself to seek the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. In other words, this is serious stuff. If you're fasting, this is serious stuff. Before a battle, you know what I'm thinking? Like, this is serious if you're fasting before a battle. All right, now we're going to skip to verse 13. Because there's a, uh, read it all if you want to, but there's a bunch of stuff. We're, can't, we're just grabbing the important stuff. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Then upon Jehazel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of, of the congregation. That's what's important there. Not all the names. In the midst of the congregation, in other words, the whole land, the whole town, the whole nation, I mean, it's a nation. The whole nation is standing there before the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord begins to move upon these people. And verse 15 says, this is God. And he said, hearken ye, all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou, King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid, nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude. Now catch this. For the battle is not yours, but God's. That's it. Let's go home. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's it. That's, if it's that simple for them, it's that simple for us. When we go and we seek the Lord, instead of seeking this one, this one, this one, if we go and seek the Lord and say, God, I'm a little scared. God, I really don't know what's going to happen next. God, I really don't know what to do. His spirit's going to begin to move, and he's going to say, don't you dare fear. Because it's mine, not yours. 16, tomorrow... They go down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Zis, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jerel. 17, ye shall not need to fight in this battle. So he's saying, y'all go ahead and y'all go down there, but you're not going to need to fight. Okay, set yourselves, stand ye still, 
and see the salvation of the Lord with you. O oh, Judah and Jerusalem, fear not nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. You just got to show up. You just got to show up every day when life gets hard, when you don't want to fight anymore. You just got to show up. And the battle is his, not yours. He's saying, don't you dare worry about it because I'm going to be right there with you. That's what he's telling you tonight. Don't you worry about the stuff you're going through. Don't you worry about this battle that you know is coming because you just got to show up and I'm going to take care of the rest. Verse 20 says, and they rose early in the morning. They didn't mess around. They got right to it. They rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness and as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God. He's reminding them here. He's reminding his people. Believe in the Lord your God, so ye shall be established. Believe his prophets, so ye shall prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord. I like this. And that should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and to say, praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. So in other words, to catch all, this is what's going on now. Judah's telling all, uh, Judah, uh, King Joseph is telling all of Judah, all of Jerusalem, don't you worry. All right, we're going to go out, but just remember God's in control. He's got it all. He's reminding him who God is, really, is what he's doing. And then he's saying, all right, here, I'm going to get some singers ready, and this is what we're going to do. That, that, literally, he's picking his praise team, and he's saying, all right, y'all get on the front lines, and let's go in and let's worship. That's all you got to do. He's like, leave your guns at home. Leave your knives at home. Leave your rocks, your stones, whatever you're going to battle with. Leave them at home. All we're taking is our praise. That's all we're taking. And when they begin to sing and praise, the Lord said, ambushments again, the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. In other words, they died. When they, uh, uh, but wait, not before. But when they begin to sing and praise, the Lord went ahead and took care of, his enemy, of their enemies just like he said that he would. 23 says, For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made it an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. In other words, they all started fighting each other. I like that. And Judah, the, the land of Judah, the tribe of Judah is just sitting back and they're just singing. You know what I'm saying? How great thou art. They're just back here singing. And their enemies are literally sitting there fighting each other, killing each other. They haven't do nothing but praise. 24 says, and when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, <laughs> and behold, they were dead bodies fallen to the earth, and none escaped. In other words, the Lord took care of every single one of them. None of them somehow managed to run off and flee and survive. When God said he's taking care of your enemies, he means he's taking care of every single one of your enemies. When God said he's going to fight your battle, he's not going to halfway fight it. He's not going to three quarters fight it. He's going to fight every single bit of it and nothing's going to stick around. But the key is none of them were killed until they decided to praise they could have just showed up and just been standing there and nothing would have happened. It was the fact that they went in with some praise in their hearts. In other words, these people had faith in their God and he knew, they knew that he was in control of the biggest battle of their lives. Listen, if your king is sitting back scared, you're probably about to be in some trouble, you know what I'm saying? If, if King Jehoshaphat wasn't scared, it wouldn't be no big deal. But it literally told us in the beginning that King Jehoshaphat feared. So it was going to be a big battle. They were probably going to be in some trouble. So one of the biggest battles of their lives, they just chilled back and they said, I know God's got it. 
Yeah, we can't do that with some small things in our life. We can't do that knowing that God's going to provide us a job when we need a job. We can't do that when we, th- we don't know how the bills are going to get paid. We can't believe. We can't go in with some praise and believe God's going to fight that battle for us. But yet, God literally just slayed all these people for Judah. You know what I'm saying? That's how we are sometimes. I mean, today, obviously, we don't find ourselves in a literal battlefield. We're not going to team up against our enemies, and we're not going to go out there, and we're not going to fight against each other. Ephesians 6 and 12 said, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. In other words, we're not out here fighting a physical war, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness in this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. In other words, our battles are spiritual. And if we want to win this battle, we've got to have some praise just like they did. So I've got five steps in understanding the power of praise that unleashes the power of our God. All right? One is you got to declare who God is every single time because you can't just walk into the battle and just be singing just to be singing. you got to make sure God is in the center of it. You know what I'm saying? As King Jehoshaphat took his place before all his people, the first thing he did was to declare God's greatness. He said it's all about him. He said, God's got us. Don't y'all dare worry. He said he was the only true God, the ruler over everything, the one who is going to take care of it all. That's what we have to do every single time. Because sometimes we like to get the big head and be like, ooh, Look what I did. Look what I made it through. I'm tough. These are my scars. Look at what I've been through. Look at what God got you through. Because you didn't make it through nothing if it wasn't for him. I don't care how big or how small. If it wasn't for him, you wouldn't have got through. Number two is you've got to make sure you're telling others what God has done. Because once again, look at these scars. Look at what I've been through. What, what about what did God do for you? This is one of the most important parts of praise when it comes against the enemy. Our enemy, the Bible tells us, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. And what does they, and the Bible says he's the father of all lies. He's seeking around, he's looking at you, seeing how he can destroy you, and he's a liar. Which means he's going to come up to you, he's waiting on you to sneak around, and he's going to come up to you and he's going to tell you a little lie. He's going to tell you a little lie about God because he don't care about nothing else. He's going to say, God don't love you. God's forgot about you. God ain't going to get you through this. You've gone too far. You're, not gonna, you're never going to amount to nothing. You're not going to make it through this. He's the father of all lies. He chips away at our faith by planting those little seeds of doubt in our mind. And once you let that seed, yeah, if you water that seed, even the littlest bit is going to begin to grow. And before you know it, it's done growed all the way, and you're in some trouble. Because you believed the father of all lies. He lies every chance he gets. And we know this, but sometimes we still believe it. Oh, yeah, I can't make it. Oh, yeah, I'm just, I've done too much. I'm not, I ain't going to make it through this one. I ain't going to make it through this one. This is, uh. Tell others about what God is doing because when you proclaim that God is getting you through it you're stopping the devil's lies and once you speak you speak life or death over your situation so once you speak life to that situation and say I am going to make it through I am going to win this battle I am victorious in the name of Jesus his lies don't have no hold on you anymore It stops those lies dead in its tracks, and it's going to replace them with the truth that our God is faithful, and he's going to fight for you. Three, you got to remember his promises. That's exactly what King Jehoshaphat did with his people. He knew that reminding his people of God's promises would encourage them to keep their faith in him, in God, not King Joseph, but in God, and then remember that God, 
is, was, and will always be on their side. Remember, we read that scripture. He was reminding them of what God promised, that he was going to show up, and he was going to take care of it. It was also a reminder that he was God's enemy, and an enemy of God is always powerless. He will always lose. He's always going to be defeated. Once you recognize that, it's game over. Number four, in humility, ask for help. If you keep reading throughout that scripture in, in chapter 20, King Jehoshaphat cries for help. He's so simple. He's so humble. He's basically saying we're powerless. This army is coming to attack us. We do not know what to do, and God, we need your help. That's really hard to do, to admit that you are nothing, that you are powerless, that you cannot make it without him. We can't win without him. We're nothing without him. And number five is praise him before you see the victory. That's the most important part. It was bold of King Jehoshaphat to just pick out, I like, I like what Pastor Graham said about, he picked his praise team, that's basically what he did. He picked out his singers and he put them on the front lines, not even in the back in case something did happen. No, he put them right there on the front because he was confident that they were gonna usher in praise and that God was gonna show up. That's bold. That's what I like to call a bunch of faith. He had no doubt that God was going to take care and he was going to fulfill his promise. They were celebrating their victory before they even won, before the fight had even started. That's how they marched out there. So before anybody had even done anything, he believed that they were going to win. That's powerful to me. I know who fights for me. And I'm not going to stay silent. I'm going to thank him because I know. I know the ending to the story. Do you know the ending to the story? Spoiler alert. We win. Read the whole Bible. We win. The devil has no power. He has no authority because your praise is a weapon to him. He cannot stand at the name of Jesus. That's how we need to be. We have the promise of ultimate victory. Like I just said, if you read the Bible, we win. Every single time. 100% money back guarantee. There's no reason to fear. There's no reason to worry. You just have to be able to take out your praise. Get on the front lines of the battle. Just show up and say, God, I'm going to praise you anyway. Hi, everyone. I'm Corbett Chris Heineken, the Dean of Arkansas Sportscasters and host of Rest Day Excel. Want we'll to say a special thank you for reasoning to amplify Jesus with us here today. No matter where you are, if you join us live here at Rest Day Church, whether you're joining us nationwide, courtesy of your local syndicated television stations across the country, or if you join us internationally and globally, courtesy of our YouTube simulcast. Thanks so much for resonating Jesus with us. Now, you ask it, and you say, corporate, you know, resonate. Now, you guys always bless us, but we want to turn around and bless you through the act of worship called giving. How do we do it? Yes, we are. Multiple ways, four of them in particular, on which you can resonate your giving. Check it out. Number one, join us live and in person here at Resonate Church at our brand new location, 3702 East Highland Drive. It is directly across the street from All Star Music in Jonesboro, Arkansas. Sundays, 10 a.m. and 5 p.m., Wednesday nights at 6.30, and we do keep in mind, Things schedule subject to change. Option number two, online. That's a little tidly thing right there. Use the term 
Resonate Church AR. That's right. Everything right there on the screen. Resonate Church AR. If you want to resonate your giving online, just follow the directions and you can do that safely and secure. Option three, the cell phone. Look, we all got one. Might as well use it, shall we? What resonate you're giving using your cell phone? All you gotta do, text the word give to that number right there on your screen. Safe, fast, secure, easy, simple to do. Option four, mailing. You wanna mail your contributions to us courtesy of a check or money order? Please make all checks and money orders payable to Resident Church and send it to the address on your screen. Once again, you want to resonate your giving courtesy of a mailing option. Send your check or money order. Make all checks and money orders payable to Resonate Church and send it to that address on your screen. And those are the ways you can resonate your giving. And remember, show love, your peace, and say Jesus. Ooh, wow. Can I? Even watch it on the money. That was awesome, girl. You rock. Thank you. You realize that by you getting your praise home, you learn the cost of your storms to cease. Your praise literally summons angels all around. When you praise God, not just praise God just for what he did for you, but praise God because of who he is to you. You start praising God for who he is to you. You watch me what believe me what I tell you. You watch you praise God for who he is to you. You watch what happens. Fuck God nowhere. Get saved. Fuck God nowhere. Getting healed. Miracles happen. Not because you showed up. It's because of God in you that showed up. Why? Because you got your praise on. Eat, sleep, praise, and worship, repeat. Uh, let's really, really uh, reverse all that, will you? Praise and worship. Praise God. Worship God. Resonate Jesus. Repeat. See? Your praise is your weapon because bottom line, what you be going through right now, your praise, sometimes your praise can be your prayer. Sometimes you can have a prayer of praise. And sometimes you can have a praise in your prayer. See? You really want to defeat, oh, you really want to defeat the enemy. Stop focusing on his taxes. Stop focusing on the enemy. When you focus on God, guess what? The enemy ain't, ain't got nothing on you. The enemy ain't got nothing on God. You watch what happens when you get your praise on. By getting your praise on, a whole lot of things happening. Your environment changes. Your surroundings change. All because you got your praise on. Yeah, this is a little bit different. Because you know what? We praise God just for the fact that we get to amplify Jesus directly to you. And you know what? We, even though we're coming up on our three-year anniversary, coming up in the month of August, we're literally praising God for each and every program that we have delivered to you. Not only is praise is our weapon, but bottom line, praise is the weapon that literally kicks down all the walls, opens up the doors. Breaks, up, breaks the bread. Breaks the bread of Jesus that literally feeds the world. That's what praise does. That's what happens when praise is your way. You know, when Murphy just sings, oh no, praise is what I do. Even when I want to be close to you, praise is what I do. the good and the bad I'll praise you God whether I'm happy or I'm sad I'll praise you no matter what I go through 
guess what? It's because praise is what I do. Is that your prayer? Is praise your thing? Whole lot to think about, huh? Whole lot to package. Praise is real. Start using it as your weapon. It is the weapon that does prosper. Start praising God just for God being God. For God being good. For the storms in your life. Start praising God for that. Start praising God for the pain. Because guess what? You start using God, you start praising God just for God. You watch what your praise does to your environment at work, your environment at home. Your family life, everything. Praising God is everything. Worshiping God is everything. Get your praise on. God, thank you so much for letting us get our praise on and letting us praise you because, God, you are awesome. God, thank you. Well, your praise and thank you for resonating your sound to us. And thank you at home for watching. Hey, ain't no service like a live rest day service because a live rest day service don't stop. Come join us live and in person right here at Rest Day Church at 4 right there. Right. And four ways you can rest day you give it. Rest Day Church as the other option. And on the pictures, news, scoops, views, info, so much more. Facebook.com forward slash Rest Day Church Jonesboro. And you watch this on this YouTube channel because like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and ring the bell. Ding, 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 ding. That way you. Ain't missing an episode. We got another good one for you. Coming up this Thursday. Join us, will ya? For our entire crew. I'm Chris Holly. So long. Give peace. You know. Resonate Jesus. We'll see you Thursday night in prime time. 9 p.m. Eastern on our YouTube simulcast and 9 p.m. Eastern and Pacific on this station. See you Thursday night. Good night, Canada. Good night, everybody. We'll see you Thursday night. So long. Neither